Hi, this is Manos Berlakis, and these are the 10 most commonly asked questions by patients who have coronary chronic total occlusion, or as they are called, coronary CTOs. Question number one, what is actually a coronary CTO? To answer this question, we need to do a brief overview of the anatomy of the heart. The heart is a muscle that works continuously, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. In order for the heart muscle to function, it requires fuel, who comes in the form of blood flow, from two coronary arteries in most people. One of them comes from the right side and is called the right coronary artery and supplies the bottom part of the heart. The other one is called the left main and splits usually into the left anterior descending artery, or LAD, that supplies the front part of the heart, and the circumflex that supplies the back of the heart. Why are they called coronary arteries? Because they are encircling the heart, similar to a crown, and the Latin term for a crown is corona. Now, those arteries should be nicely open so there is no obstruction to the flow of the blood to the heart muscle. However, sometimes blockages develop inside those arteries, and those blockages can become 100%. A 100% blockage that has been there for three months or more, this is what's called a chronic total occlusion. A sudden blockage that's 100% is actually what can lead to a heart attack. This is how the coronary arteries look when we perform a procedure called coronary angiography. In this procedure, we advance a catheter all the way inside the beginning of the artery and detect a dye that we can look at under X-ray. This is an example of the right coronary artery that looks widely open with good blood flow distally. Contrasted with this right coronary artery that is completely blocked, and as a result, there is no blood flow going the way that we were born, but instead there's some blood flow coming from the other coronary artery to keep the bottom part of the heart alive. This blood flow is not enough, however, when the patient has to do a little more activity. There are other ways to look at the coronary arteries. One of them is to do a coronary computed tomography and geography. This is a non-invasive method. And uh, here is an example of the left anterior descending artery that is uh, occluded, has a CTO in the middle segment. Second question. Why? And how did I get a CTO? CTO is one form of what's called coronary artery disease or coronary atherosclerosis. Coronary artery disease simply means blockage development within the arteries of the heart. And there are many potential reasons why this can happen. We know that uh, smoking, high cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, diabetes, and uh, genetic factors can increase the risk of developing blockages. Also, we know that the development of blockages is more likely as one gets older. Those blockages are initially partial, they cause only partial obstruction to the blood flow, but over time they may get worse and eventually lead to complete occlusion of the coronary artery. Question number three, what are the symptoms caused by the CTO? The most common symptoms caused by the CTO are chest pain or discomfort and shortness of breath. The chest pain can uh, radiate to the left arm, can feel like pressure, can go to the back, sometimes it can go to the neck, and usually it happens with exertion. The chest pain that is caused by blockages in the arteries of the heart is called angina. Shortness of breath is also very common and happens with exertion, but there are other less common symptoms such as fatigue, low energy, as well as nausea. Those symptoms often develop gradually, so many people subconsciously decrease their activity level so that they do not develop the symptoms. However, when we speak to the spouse or the significant other, it often becomes evident that uh, they are doing now much less than what they used to do a few months uh, or years prior. Question number four. If uh, I have a CTO, what are the medications that I need to take? There are many medications that are important for patients who have coronary artery disease, including the patients who have CTOs. And those medications can be grouped into two categories. The first one are medications that can 
prevent the disease from getting worse. And the other ones are medications that can prevent symptoms, make patients feel better. In terms of those that can prevent the progression or uh, developing worsening of the disease, those include blood thinners, such as the baby aspirin, P2Y12 inhibitors, such as clopidogrel, and also medications that lower the cholesterol. Those medications include the statins, PCSK9 inhibitors, bepedoic acid, ezetimibe. When it comes to medications that help the patients feel better, have less chest discomfort or less shortness of breath, those include nitroglycerin, both sublingual but also long-acting, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, as well as ranolazine. Question number five, how can a CTO be opened? There are two ways that one can get blood flow to the artery that has been blocked. And one of them is open heart surgery. It's called coronary artery bypass graft surgery or cabbage. And what is done in the surgery is that the surgeon takes a piece of vein from the leg and a piece of artery and uses this to divert the blood flow around the area of the blockage. So now the blood, instead of flowing through the area of the blockage, as it used to do, now it's flowing around the area of the blockage, bypassing the blockage. And that's why it is called bypass. The other way to open the blockage is to do what's called percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI. And this is done by advancing small wires, balloons, and stands through the area of the blockage that then allow the blood to flow through the area that used to be blocked. Question number six, how is CTO percutaneous coronary intervention or CTO PCI actually done? This is a patient who has a chronic total occlusion on the right coronary artery. In order to open the CTO using stents, we go through two arteries, either the two arteries in the leg or one leg and one arm, and then advance a small wire and a catheter all the way into the artery that is blocked. This catheter is used to then advance other equipment through the area of the blockage. We first insert a guide wire through the blockage, and then after doing that, we advance balloons and stents. This is an example of stent, and the stents are loaded on balloons. It goes across the area of the blockage. The balloon is inflated, which expands the stent. Then the balloon is deflated and removed, leaving the stent in place to allow the blood to flow through the previously blocked artery. Question number seven. Does a CTO need to be revascularized or opened up? And like everything else is medicine, it depends. It depends on the benefits and the risks. If the benefits are more than the risk, then it's worth going for it. But uh, if it's the other way around, then just continue with medications may be all that is needed. Now, what are the benefits? The key benefit from opening an artery is to improve symptoms, make people feel better having less chest pain, less shortness of breath, being able to do more activities without being limited by those symptoms. But, but there are also uh, potential risks during the procedure as well as after the procedure. Those risks include things like heart attack, like having the need for an emergency surgery, having a stroke, even dying, small but not zero. And then also there is a risk of the stents narrowing down the line. We often do balloons and stents in patients who have previous bypass surgery, and now they come and they have a blocked bypass grafts. Those bypass grafts often don't respond very well to balloons, to balloons and stents. And what we do is we open the native artery, that is often a CTO, and this native artery is much more likely to stay open long term compared to if we treat the bypass graft. Question number eight. How do you actually choose between PCI, the stents, and bypass surgery? And this can be complex and depends on many parameters. Depends on how much disease there is, how many blockages there are in the arteries of the heart. It also depends on the clinical condition of the patient. Also depends to a large extent on the preference of the patient and the family. But we're starting first with the patient's symptoms, which, as I mentioned, is the number one reason for doing interventions in arteries that are chronically blocked. 
And then if the patient have heart bypass, we typically do stents. If they have only one artery blocked, the CTO is the only blocked artery they have, we still do PCI or stents most of the time. But if they have multiple arteries blocked, especially if they are diabetic, then coronary bypass craft surgery is the preferred option. Question number nine. What are the success and the complication rates of CTO intervention? And this is important because, as I mentioned before, doing an intervention in the heart does have significant risks. The success rate at experience centers is about 85 to 90%, with a risk of about 2 to 3% for a complication. However, the success rates are significantly lower at less experienced centers. That is why it is important to have the procedure done by centers and operators who are experienced in dealing with these blockages. A final question, what should I expect before, during, and after the procedure? And let's start with the before. Some blood tests may be required, and also some imaging tests like the CAT scan we mentioned before, ultrasound of the heart, echocardiogram, or cardiac MRI. Then, the mid after the midnight, the night before the procedure, it is important to not eat or drink. And then some medications, such as blood thinners and some diabetes medications, uh, may need to be held before the procedure. What happens during the hospital stay? Once you come to the procedure room, you receive uh, some medications to relax you, and often you don't remember much about what happened during the procedure. Then, uh, usually two catheters are placed either in the groin or the wrist area through which the balloons and the stents are advanced. Sometimes a device may be needed to support the function of the heart, and usually this device is removed at the end of the procedure. Then various wires, balloons, stents, and other devices are used to get through the CTO and open it up. And everyone asks, how long will it take? And the answer is, it depends. It's very variable. The average time is about two hours, but it can be less than that, or it can be much longer than that. So we never give a full estimate about how long it's going to take, but we tell the patient and the family that we'll keep you posted. It may take two hours, but it may take significantly longer than that. This is how the procedure loom looks like. Uh, the patient lies down on the cath lab table. This is the X-ray machines through which we can see what we're doing inside the arteries of the heart. And uh, these are the screen where we're monitoring our, our equipment and the arteries of the heart. We're monitoring the heart rate. We're monitoring the EKG and the blood pressure so that everything goes as smooth as possible. What happens now after the procedure? you might feel some mild discomfort at the areas where the catheters were inserted. Most people stay at the hospital overnight and then go home the following day unless there is a need for extra monitoring. Some people feel better immediately. They finish the procedure and they can say they can feel way better, where some others may take some longer to be able to get back to uh, feeling better and doing more activities. It is important to not lift anything more than 10 pounds initially after the procedure to prevent any bleeding at the access points. Many patients are referred to cardiac rehabilitation where they can have a supervised exercise to increase their capacity and their ability to do more activities. This is very important because quite often patients have been uh, quite uh, sedentary, not doing very much because of the symptoms, and now they need some help to increase their activities again. Some medications are very important, specifically aspirin and a P2Y12 inhibitor. The most commonly used one is called clopidogrel. The aspirin and clopidogrel are very important medications to prevent any blood clots from forming inside the stents that are placed into the 100% blockage. Also, we should not forget that uh, a healthy lifestyle is important to prevent uh, recurrent blockages. This is not the end more blockages can develop. So following a healthy diet, getting exercise, getting enough sleep can all help. Now, if the procedure was not successful, then sometimes it can be tried again, usually after a few weeks or months. And sometimes if bypass is an option and the procedure is not successful, then bypass might become a treatment option for some of the patients. 
So in summary, in this video, we went through what is a CTO, how it can be treated. We discussed about the procedures, the medications, and what to expect. We hope you find this video useful and hope you feel better and be able to live a healthy, long life. Thank you.